not that big a deal for me. <laughs> yes, I, I, knew. I, don't know I know who drew this. I know who drew this. Hermit the Frog here, and today we're going over my favorite new book, my autobiography, Digging in the Swine. I'm gonna make some piggy squeal. Doth thou even English? I mean, no. I mean, English is is such a weird language unto itself. I mean. First off, our language, our language itself is Germanic. Like it, ca- it comes from the Angles. It's not Mr. Beast type anymore. Oh come on! Oh. It's, it's not Mr. Beast. To, I'll fold it. You throw it everywhere. Uh, they had to like go pick up our shirts off the table earlier, and he was like, "Yeah, this one's yours because it's folded, so I don't even have to look at the size. <laughs> like I know it is." I can go home. <laughs> you can do this yourself. I'm, I'm, just being, I'm just being a spiteful dick. I I'm quit, sorry. Lucifer. Oh, wow. I'm no, sorry. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> someone someone will be pissed that I made that joke. Oh, Someone will yeah. be like, Nate. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it, we, we do this all the time, guys. We're, we're just like messing I'm around. I'm always like, I quit the channel. And Nate's like, okay, when are you coming back? <laughs> all right. All right. Let me, know, uh, let me know when you get home. And then uh, let me know when you're, you're coming Every back. Every time I leave, Nate's like, drive safe. I'm like, nope. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we have had quite the adventure here over the last 15 minutes. and We just, like, literally started browsing Twitter. I fucking well, am not no, kidding. No, no, we didn't just start browsing Twitter. First Chad messages, then we shared Chad's shit on Discord. We have to include Discord. some of Chad's stuff. Uh, no, I'm leaving a lot okay. of that, okay? But but what happened after the Chad stuff? After, what happened after the Chad stuff, you know, we started looking at, like, the offer. We started looking at a bunch of stuff. And now, here we are. Uh, we're finally we getting were to the reaction. We were supposed to this one a fast one. Yes. <laughs> This video was made possible by Skillshare, an online learning community with over 17,000 classes. English is hard. That is imagine. the joke. Keep watching until the end of the video to and learn the only how you can get your first two months for free. Did not grow up England speaking it. in the Middle Ages. <laughs> the sun is shining. The birds are singing. The children are playing in the village square. What a wonderful time to be alive. Hey, you're dying of dysentery. And also we're being raided by Vikings. What an awful time to be alive. Yes. It's the year 900. Europe is a Viking's wet dream. Raids galore. Hey, you want to go raid Paris? Okay. That particular raid didn't go too well, but the King of the Franks said, You guys are pretty tough and scary. How about we give you land in northern France, and in return, you protect us from other Vikings. And it was agreed. The, the Vikings Norms. set up the Duchy of Normandy, the Normans, and then they went full yeah. on French, converting to Christianity, learning the language, and making babies with the locals. England also had its fair share of Viking problems. In the 800s, the Danish Danes, Vikings had conquered yep. most of the country, but the Anglo-Saxons eventually managed to kick them out, although they left behind a bunch of Viking settlers. Now this guy's king. He sucks. Replace him with his brother. And he was like, hey baby, how you doing? And had a son, and then turned around and was like, hey baby, how you doing? And had another son. And then he died, and no one was sure which son to make king. This one, because he's older. Not if I have anything to do with it. That works for us, too. <laughs> then he grew up and married the unready. his daughter, and a had lot a bunch of, of kids. Oh, shit. Remember this one. A lot of people claim Ethelred the Unready is as this actually uh, history. Yeah, you know, as someone who doesn't <laughs> probably should have had this conversation before. Uh, as someone who doesn't really know anything about history and never found it interesting, I feel like I should look into this channel more so I can be educated on things. This, if it's yeah, accurate, oversimplified. Yeah, it's. I would say it, he glosses over a lot of like the grimy details. I don't but, even know the basics of a lot. of Well, stuff okay, about. and that's then oversimplified is for you. This right here, Ethelred the Unready is considered like the first true British monarch. But there's a problem with it is because he did not rule over a fully conquered like England. But anyway, Extremes like I was saying, good. You gotta well, be open. Exactly. But anyway, Ethelred the Unready, considered the first British monarch in a lot of in a lot of historical books out there, but no, he's not. Instead, we get this. He's important. Then his advisors came to him and said, Hey man. All those Viking settlers that are living here, they might band together and kill you. Well then, why don't we kill them first? And so and it was. Massacre. This pissed yep. off the Danish king, who launched an invasion, and the Vikings conquered England once again. Then the Anglo-Saxons unconquered it, then the Vikings reconquered it. The king's family had to go into exile, including Edward. Remember him? He went to Normandy where he lived for 30 years. He and his brother Alfred tried to return to England to retake the throne from the Vikings, but they were betrayed by the Earl of Wessex who said, Hey friend, I'll take you to London where all the nobles are waiting to make Mm -hmm. you king. Oh no, look out, red hot poker in the eyes. I can't see. And thus you can't be king. Edward then escaped back to Normandy. After a few more Viking kings came and went, one finally died without an heir, and Edward was called back to England where he became king. And that's where our story begins. 
Here's the thing about becoming a king in the Middle Ages. Often your entire country won't support you at first. You can be vulnerable to rebellions and it's up to you to take control. Fortunately for Edward, there was already a super powerful guy who had a lot of control over England. And if Edward could get his support, then England would be his. Who is this guy? Oh, piss, it's the guy who gave my brother the red hot poker in the eyes. After an awkward moment where Edward exiled Godwin from the country, he eventually had to give in and let him keep his earldom, possibly after Godwin gave him a bunch of gold and said he was very, very sorry. King Edward also married Godwin's daughter. Then Godwin died and his massive fortune was passed down to his sons, who all became earls. In particular, this one became the new Earl of Wessex. Harold Godwinson was now King Edward's brother-in-law. He was a close advisor to the king, a brave warrior who had proven himself in battle against the Welsh, and in many ways he was almost like a co-king. Uh-oh. Edward got old and he's on his deathbed. Possibly for religious reasons, or maybe because he wasn't happy about having to marry her, he didn't boink his wife, and as a result has no kids. Meaning there's no obvious heir to the throne. Meaning I'm gonna be king. He does have a grandnephew, it could be him. Mm, no. Now let's go with me. Just one problem. I mentioned that Edward's mother was a Norman. Edward grew up in Normandy, and he had a lot of Norman friends. The current Duke of Normandy was William the Bastard. Why was he called the Bastard? One day his father was sneaking out of his castle when his advisors said, Where are you going? Uh, to the tanner shop? Why? To get a... Tan? Tan. But that was a lie. Firstly, because tanners give you leather, not tans. And secondly, because <laughs> he was really going to see the tanner's daughter. One thing leads to another, and out comes baby William. Born out of wedlock. Thus, an absolute bastard. Well... No, that, like... Yeah, but... William the... Well, no, because that's the thing. It Back was the then... the way he worded it. Well, yeah, I know. An absolute uh, bastard. And, well, when you learn about William, I mean... Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll say it after the video's over about William. Actually, you know what? I think we'll figure... I think we'll see fully the extent of William and what he did during his... His father died when William was seven or eight, and he became the new Duke. He spent most of his childhood narrowly avoiding assassination, which probably turned him into the big balls tough guy he's remembered as today. In 1051, the town of Alisson tried to rebel against him, and the townspeople beat on dead animal skins as an insult to his commoner mother. William was furious, and he responded by, well, let's just say it wasn't pretty. That... He literally chopped their arms off. Well, that's not good. Well, talk shit about his mother, I mean... That's not good either. But. Well, but I wouldn't chop their arms off. Instead, I'd like break their arms and be like, hit them now. You can keep them, but they're just not going to work for a while. Exactly. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. Also, you might die of infection because, you know, it's literally the, the, the ninth century. Can you get an infection from a broken bone? Yes, you can. It'd be, it's even worse if it breaks the skin. Well, yeah, I, I meant just like a fracture or something. Well, yeah, um, because if it doesn't heal properly, then it can get infected. Yeah. Oh, hmm. Because your body naturally has bacteria in it, and if enough, enough builds up in a certain area... Yeah, I guess then, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's the kind of guy we're dealing with here. William and Edward were good friends, and Edward allegedly promised that William could have the English throne after him. A decade later, Harold Godwinson even visited William and pledged an oath to him over holy relics, promising that William could be the next king of England. Although it's possible Harold only did it because William was holding his family hostage. <laughs> so when William heard that the king was on his deathbed, he said, Hooray, I'm gonna be king. So now you have two extremely powerful men who both think they're about to become the next king. But wait. This guy Ardrata. is the king yep. of Norway. He spent most of his life as a warrior for hire, fighting for whoever would give him the most gold. You name a place, he probably fought a war there. Poland? Yep. Estonia? Yep. Against pirates in the Mediterranean? Yep. yep. The Holy Lands? Sicily? And Bulgaria? Yep. yep. He got crazy rich off the back of it and was swimming in gold. Herdrada is what you would call a weathered veteran of a fucking warrior. I mean, reading about Herdrada, I was just like, how is this man not remembered as, like, one of the greatest warriors of all time? Then this. Then he returned home and became king. One of the previous Norwegian kings had made an agreement with one of England's Viking kings, saying that when that Viking king died, the king of Norway would get the English throne. Hardrada felt that because of this agreement, he was now entitled to the English throne. He was also eager to go on one last big conquest that would turn him into a legend. So when he got word that Edward was on his deathbed, he thought, I'm going to invade England, and then I'm going to be king. So now we have three extremely powerful men who all think they're about to become the next king of England, and that means somebody's probably about to get hurt. Back in England, Harold Godwinson is watching over the dying king, Edward. Suddenly, he comes out with a shocking announcement. Hey, uh, everyone, gather in. That's it. Come closer. Don't be shy. Uh, okay, so I've got bad news. The king is dead. Um, I know, very sad. Uh, but good news. He said that I should be the next king, so hooray for me. And, um, oh yeah, he said that if he once told anyone else they could be king, that he doesn't like them anymore, and they should just stay in Normandy.
And also he said that no one should ask any further questions. Okay, good talk. Go, um, go do whatever it is you do. Usually it took months of preparation to crown a new king, but Harold rushed it and he had himself crowned the same day King Edward was buried. In oh, Normandy, God. William's advice- Yeah, that's the kind of, that's the kind of shit we were dealing with back then. Because, again, it was a free-for-all back in the day for, like, thrones and all that. Before rules were set up and were enforced by, like, parliament and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Back then it was just like, the monarchy is the end rule and the king is human and can die very easily. Have fun. <laughs> Have fun, yeah. Rises came to him and said, Hey, Big Willie, bad news. Harold Godwinson has taken the English throne. And William was furious, so he sent an envoy to Harold who said, William says you stole the throne and demands you immediately return it to him. Hmm, let me think about that. No. No. He said no. That bastard. Wait, I thought you were the bastard. Dude. Dude. Uncool. <laughs> William immediately began gathering his armies together and preparing for an invasion of England. Just had to now, wait. Now, killing a king was generally frowned upon oh, in yeah. old time of Europe because they were considered to have been chosen by God himself. So back in Normandy, William had to get God on his side. He needed the Pope's blessing for his conquest. So he went to the Pope and said, Godwinson made an oath to me over holy relics, and then he usurped the throne. Can I kill him? Eh, sure, why not? So the Pope gave William his blessing, meaning William now had God on his side. Everything was ready to go. Just one problem. The wind. <laughs> it was blowing the wrong way, and William had to wait with his army in Normandy while Godwinson waited with his army in the south of England. They waited, and waited, and waited, and then William said screw it and sailed for England and got shipwrecked because the wind was blowing the wrong way. So then he decided to keep on waiting. They waited for two months and the wind never changed. Eventually Godwinson got bored and also ran out of food for his soldiers. So he sent them all home and he returned to London. The south coast was undefended and all William could do was keep waiting. While the northerly wind kept William in Normandy, it was carrying Hardrada and his uh -huh. Viking army to England. Hardrada landed near the old Viking city of York and defeated a regional army led by the Northern Earls, and York surrendered. When Godwinson heard about this, he must have been pretty upset. He had just disbanded his army, and now he had to gather them all together again and march all the way north. He made the exhausting journey in just four days, which is crazy quick, and he caught the Vikings off guard and unprepared for battle. The two armies stood on either side of the River Derwent. Legend says that a berserker Viking single-handedly held the only bridge crossing the river, dodging arrows and fending off attackers, until some English soldiers got under the bridge in a barrel and gave him the old spear in the jewel. <laughs> this gave the Vikings enough time yep. to form a shield wall, but because they had been caught off guard, many weren't wearing their chainmail and armor, and the English eventually defeated them, killing Hardrada, and with him, bringing the Viking era in England to an end. Finally! William's fleet of over 700 ships and 14,000 men set sail and landed on the English coast at Pevensey and set up camp near Hastings. And Harold was still all the way in York. His exhausted army had to march yes. all the way south just days after their battle with the Vikings. Harold made it to London and considered just staying there and waiting for William to come to him. But William forced Harold's hand by burning down a bunch of villages. Harold's army set out and met Williams on the 14th of October, 1066. And both sides prepared themselves for the Battle of Hastings. The English were on a hill, so they decided to stay there because it was a good defensive position. It's over, the Anakin. Approached, I have the high ground. probably spent a while yelling at each other. William and the Normans had a few tactical advantages over the English. The first were the archers. The Normans sent volley after volley of arrows at the English, who formed a shield wall in defense. Then William sent his infantry up the hill. The English threw anything they had at them, and the Normans couldn't break through the shield Wall. Then the Normans' next tactical advantage came into play. William sent his cavalry up the hill, but even they struggled to break through the shield wall defenses. Wave after wave of infantry and cavalry came, and Harold knew all he had to do was let the Normans exhaust themselves and he would win. But then something a bit strange happened. It's possible the Normans incorrectly believed William had been killed. Maybe they lost their will to fight against the shield wall, or maybe it was an intentional deception tactic. But suddenly, the Norman forces turned and ran away from the English. Believing they had won, the English broke their shield wall and chased down the retreating Normans, who then turned Dang. around, encircled the English troops, and cut them down. In the chaotic fighting that followed, Harold Godwinson was killed, the most popular theory being that he took an arrow in the eye. The English were defeated, and Irony. William had won. He was no more just a bastard. Now, now he was conqueror. a conqueror. At yes. first, the English nobles were reluctant to make him king, but William burned down a few more villages, and the nobles eventually gave <laughs> in and offered him the crown. As he was coronated, the local villagers in Westminster let out a cheer of support. But William thought it was a riot, so he burned down the village. William uh, then had... Yeah, he did that. And here's why William is considered the first true monarch of, of, like, of, of England. is because 
Not only did he do that, but he did this. To go on a long and costly campaign of quelling rebellions and burning down villages all over England to force the people into submission. And England went through a massive transformation under its new Norman rule. English nobles were replaced with Normans. They built castles and grand cathedrals, but one of the most interesting changes occurred within the, language. the English language. The Normans brought their dialect of French to England and it merged with old English in ways we yep. still live with today. First of all, the Normans were obviously the ones in power. So words related to power like government, judge, castle, and crown come from the Normans. Words that are considered posher or more refined are usually the Norman ones. At first the Anglo-Saxons probably weren't that friendly to the Normans, while the Normans likely weren't that amiable towards the Anglo-Saxons. An Anglo-Saxon might come into a room, but a Norman would enter into a chamber. An Anglo-Saxon might buy themselves a shirt, while a Norman would purchase a blouse. And while that filthy peasant's new shirt may be fair, the Norman blouse is absolutely beautiful. The Normans actually considered some Anglo-Saxon words so crude that I can't even say them on YouTube. But there's more. Ask an Anglo-Saxon <laughs> what job he does, and he might respond with some low-level trade, such as a baker, a miller, or a shoemaker. But a Norman has a skilled trade, like a painter, a tailor, or a merchant. The Anglo-Saxon farmers working in the fields owned many cows, pigs, and sheep. But once they were served up in a Norman banquet, they became beef, beef pork, pork, and, and mutton. mutton. And written mm -hmm. English changed too. Since many Anglo-Saxons couldn't write, the written language was romanticized. This is the Your biggest change that, that everyone knows nowadays. Cool Whip might just be speaking an old English dialect as the Anglo-Saxons originally wrote it when, where, and what, but the Normans swapped the W and H around, yep. and the long English A vowel <laughs> sounded more like an O to the Normans, so you can thank them that you live in a home, not a ham. <laughs> hey, fun fact about William, the man couldn't read or write, not in French, not in English. He was illiterate. He was an illiterate moron. Wow. Imagine that. Well, I mean, actually, you don't have to imagine that. I mean, we've had plenty of world leaders who are absolute idiots. I mean, no, not naming names, but <clears throat> um, several presidents. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, did I just say that out loud? Not in anything. Well, what if I told you there was a place where you could learn French, English, even Japanese if you wanted? And not just that. Pick up a musical instrument, learn to code games and apps, animation, photography and film, anything you could dream of. All taught by genuine Skillshare. experts. Skillshare. And you can get your first two months for free. I'm talking about Skillshare. With over 17,000... Uh, I talked about Skillshare before. Uh, Brian and Marie actually were doing a, a class on there on, like, 3D artwork and all that. I thought that. it might be neat to look into. Um, oh, I've, I've For the free trial, you know, to, like... I don't know anything about using my video editor, for example, so instead of bugging Nick, maybe I could just see if there's something quick on there, you know? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's it's worth and it. And I might learn something that could help Nick, even, like if I did it from someone else. Yeah. Because, you know, people share tips like that, so... Well, it's just like I've learned stuff from Wolf. I learned stuff from uh, Jacob. Uh, so I've, I've been considering it. Uh, I'm going to make a note so I don't forget, because I should definitely do that. And uh, the biggest supporter of... of Mm, oversimplified has been Skillshare. I mean, you know, if you want to look up more on uh, more on like Skillshare, uh, you know, you if you want to look up uh, oversimplified more, you'll get Skillshare stuff yeah. on there. Uh, I think that it would be good. Maybe because I know I'm going to be working on my channel more after the surgery. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could use some oversimplified content to uh, reactions. Oh, online. yes. If, if they go well, I don't know. Oh, so far. I mean, so good. I mean, I could definitely do that since I am literally clueless. It'd be a really good way to, you know, learn some stuff. Learning is important. Oh, man. I, I'm trying to think of something to write down here. I'm trying to think of a good historical quip, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Anywho, yeah, that was oversimplified. Uh, the war that changed the English language. And it hasn't stopped. I mean, you know, when the Angles came over, and then, you know, when the Saxons came over, everything combined together. And then listening to old English be spoken is almost like listening to... It, it's like, what are they talking? What? Right. And then eventually, well, I mean, the numbers and the the numbers and lettering are Hindu Arabic, so I mean, yeah, it's just everything's borrowed from everything, guys. Is that an um, extension that you have on your YouTube? Oh yeah, the uh, Tube Buddy. That's new. Yeah, I like that. This uh, yeah, it shows you like all the interesting stuff. Even shares like social uh, media. Well, it stuff. also I noticed the tags. I never seen tags yeah yeah like that so. and that's why i uh that's why i basically just i i got it because i'm just like oh that's interesting that is neat because like it's showing all the different stuff that they have tagged and it also shows like also here uh it shows uh how their uh keywords are in terms of their usage 
uh, keywords. That's like, fancy. Yeah, it's neat. It's very neat. It also shows you like social media sharing and all that. I like it a lot. That is cool. Uh, I do have to say, Oversimplified has merch, and I'm curious as to what it looks like because, like, usually they do like pins and stuff like that. Redirecting my dudes. Yeah, okay. That's exactly what I expected. Okay. Yeah, Napoleon. <laughs> oh, yeah, they also have the pins as well. Oh, they're sold out of the Napoleon pins. They got the Abraham Lincoln and the Winston Churchill. See, I don't even know who half these people are. I oh, need, I need Henry, to get learned. Henry VIII, Marie Antoinette, King Louis the... Like, their names I've heard, but I George don't know Washington. anything about them. I know George uh, Washington. Average height for the, for the time. I was going to say, <laughs> you should get that. You should get that uh, and wear that. Emus are magic. USS Starbucks. <laughs> That's cool. The oversimplified. I, I definitely expected some funny stuff, so this was Oh, not... yeah. Defect to the West. We have vegetable peelers. I, I, I yeah, the, it's like, dude, uncool. The huh. guillotine, chop, chop. I like that. But the Napoleon, uh, the Napoleon pin, that's cool. I would like to try and get some of these. Uh, I know I, I want to get the George Washington. Oh, the King Louis one. That one looks pretty nice. Uh, the Abe most Lincoln. history I know is that I've seen the Hamilton musical. So that's about where I'm at on history knowledge. In terms of historical accuracy, that one's not the best. But I would recommend like checking out I definitely out remember asking you because you used to want to be a history teacher. I said, would you show Hamilton in your class? And you said you would, but you would also leave a disclaimer. I, yes. And like, let I them would know be like, what was different. I, I'd be like, here's the different. Uh, like, there would be parts. Like, after certain parts, I would just be like... In all actuality, with this scene right here, I don't know why Lin Manuel Miranda changed the historical aspect because the actual historical aspect was very interesting. I have to, I have a TikTok, but we've been making this video forever, so I'll show you after. Yeah, I need to tell you also what Chad's next song is going to be about too. So we're going to move on, everyone. This was Oversimplified, the war that changed the English language. Hopefully, you all enjoyed. If you want to see more from Oversimplified, feel free to click the Oversimplified logo in the title of the video. And if you want to see more from us, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell to so stay notified. Until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Quinn. We'll see you then, everybody. Peace out.